Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and welcome to Chinese Operating Systems. Uh, two weeks ago you might have seen me talk about Russian operating systems, and that was sort of scratching the bunghole of the operating system rabbit hole. Now ladies and gentlemen, as large countries come by, a lot of them are actually deciding to cut their dependence on one another, at least in the capacity of software. Now, for countries like China and the United States, these are big, massive companies, countries, sorry, that have the ability to create their own hardware and their own software. Now, in China, they're already making their own variants of processors, but what about software? When are the Chinese going to truly cut the Windows umbilical cord? The answer is probably never. If you go to a Chinese cyber cafe to play some video games, you'll probably find out that they're still running Windows XP. They might have updated to Windows 7. God, if they updated to Windows 8, we'd be crying. And Windows 10. But generally, Windows is still primarily used. That's because Windows is entrenched. But ladies and gentlemen, in the last several years, Linux has become sort of a main staple. It's become an actual serious contender. Now, Linux, in my opinion, has always sort of been there, but it's mostly relegated to that back end, that server side, you know, sort of to the power user, if you will. Linux is very popular. If you go to any big giant back end or big company, everyone is using Linux and everyone is contributing to Linux through open source. That means every time Linux gets a contribution, everyone benefits. Now, I use Linux primarily, Arch Linux, but there's plenty of distributions anybody can use. The reason I use Linux is I don't trust any country or big government running their software to control aspects of my system. I use Linux because I know that I can modify and control every single aspect of it. And that means I virtualize Windows, Mac, whatever big operating system right underneath Linux, meaning that I use Windows, but except on my terms, not Microsoft's, my terms. Listen, if Microsoft's going to make their own version of Linux and brand it, I, I, I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm going to use Linux, all right? It is what it is. Now, I'm not here to come and, you know, guide you to my world. I'm here to show you Chinese-based software. They create Kylin, okay? Kylin OS. Neo Kylin, if you will. Now, here they've got version uh, 10, all right? Which, uh, drum that looks really close to Windows 10. Some might be, some might be fooled into believing that would be Windows 10. See, there's something you have to understand about China is when it comes to intellectual property, Whoo, do they not care? It's actually one of the big sticking points between US legislation and Chinese legislation. Every time they talk, it's like, please don't steal our IP. And of course the Chinese government is, <laughs> okay, buddy, <laughs> sure. Now here I've got Neo Kylin OG. Now this is like version 6.0. Uh, getting the most recent version of Kylin isn't really a possibility. And that's because China is like really going out of their way to limit me from downloading their OS. Seriously, I'm downloading one right now called Red Flag OS, and I have been having this fail on me for like two days. This download might fail. If it succeeds, I'll add this coverage into this video, but I'm not holding my breath, buckos. So I've got Neo Kylin 6, and I'm gonna hit start on it, because I've got a whole bunch of virtual machines to look at right here. So let's get started with the first glimpse of Chinese operating systems. <laughs> you can tell right now that uh, they're not really ashamed of copying XP. That's... That's dead, dude. That's a dead copy. I'm just saying. Ah, here we go. Tom. Of course, I'm naming myself Tom. Now, people wonder if I'm getting spied on through this. I actually don't think the OS has too much spying components into it. I think a lot of the Chinese spying actually happens server-side on the ISP level. Then again, there's nothing stopping China from installing rootkits into some of the packages they distribute with this to run on you. But here, ladies and gentlemen... Whew, if you thought this wasn't a Windows XP copy, you are dead wrong. Look at that. They're, they don't care. They're not even hiding it, ladies and gentlemen. Now, of course, what? wow, they really are not hiding it. My God, it is a one-to-one -one rip of Windows XP. But here you've got your general stuff. You've got Furry Fox web browser. So if you want to browse the web, you got it right built in, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, this one connects right to C2MS. Yeah, CS2C right here, directly back to one of the websites distributing this shit. But then again, you've also got a mail browser. So they've got Thunderbird. So again, these are like the open source equivalents. And if it's one thing <laughs> that you got to realize is first off, they got me MailFence secure email and Gandhi.net. But they're also copying the exact UI of XP. They're not even changing the colors, bro. They could have made this a purple X and that would have been a slight change. But if you look inside, they've got their own office tools. So you can use their version of Microsoft Word. In fact, if you open it up, it looks kind of bare bones. I'm not going to lie, but it's basically an office suite. How much do you want to bet this is just like LibreOffice or any other free office suite, the open source ones copied and redistributed? Well, 
I'm gonna have to bet that that's probably a reality. Now here on their main computer system, you can see that they've got your standard Linux system. Oh, breaking it up, your standard Linux system. Now, I haven't installed any guest editions, so the graphic performance just isn't there. But uh, they've got some games that we can try out, ladies and gentlemen. So they've got like Tetris. I mean, if you wanna play some Tetris, good old fashioned Tetris, it is in fact right over there. Look at that, it's, it's just Tetris. It's just Tetris. Can I slot it in? Yes, I can. <laughs> and yeah, it's 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 literally just gnome Tetris. And there it is. I've lost. Probably gonna get sent to a concentration like or, or something later on, dude. But in the terminal here, real quick, if you actually check it out, you can find out which version of Linux we're on. So if you do uname A, it'll tell you we're on kernel version 3.12. This is old. You can tell it was built on June 8th, 2014. So it is. It is genuinely an older build, that's, that's for sure. But they've got more stuff, like you can watch videos and uh, you know, you can, what the hell is this? Let me open this up. This is like, oh, it's an audio recorder. Damn, dude, you can just rip audio files right onto your like device. What Windows clone isn't complete without the ability to use discount MS Paint? So if we open up the MS Paint right here, you can see that they've got a mix of Photoshop and a paint tool. So I gotta say, in some capacities, this is actually better than MS Paint. But yeah, that is one of the actual things that you can get. And while it's actually checking my browser, it's taking a long time. But I'm gonna wager this is just, this This has to just be Google Chrome, come on now. Here, in the About section, this is just web, GNOME web. Okay, so it is GNOME web, something else. 3.8.2. How much of this is originally designed by NeoKylon? Do they just take a bunch of free packages and bundle them together? Hey, look at that, they're virtual machine friendly right over here. Look at that, they got VirtualBox and everything. And what the heck is this tool? Is this their like virus cleaning tool? Oh man, oh baby, oh baby, they got virus scanning tools right built in. Mm. All right, let's do a little virus scan while we're checking everything else. What is NeoView, you would think? I think this is like some special Chinese tool. This is like originally designed by them, okay? This is like their own tool. I'll be honest though, this isn't that impressive, man. The fact that they've ripped off Microsoft Windows XP this hard hurts, but they've got some fly wallpapers. Like, look at this one, dude. This, this, this actually might make it worth the amount of stolen uh, theft. Now, to understand, are you ever able to do anything with something like this? Uh, it's actually too old. You'd probably need a newer version of Neo Kylin, which is where this next part of the video goes to. Now, to understand, I don't have access to the newest Neo Kylin, but I have Ubuntu Kylin, which is apparently a collaboration between the same people and the Ubuntu people, okay? So, canonical. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you've probably heard of Ubuntu as one of the most popular versions of Linux distributions that people download. It's easy. Any grandma can download it, flash it, maybe not a grandma, flash it, install it, and run it within minutes. And Ubuntu Kylin is not far off. Now, again, anybody can download this. They're not really blocking it off via Chinese web access like some of the other operating systems in this case, like Red, uh, what is it, like Red Flag OS. So let's open up Ubuntu Kylin and see how the future modern versions of Linux look. Oh, dude, look at that. They got like a cool little boot up screen right here, dude. It's like a little blown up Ubuntu aura. That might be better than anything I've seen on Windows, might be better than anything I've seen on Mac, and definitely better than some of my Arch Linux stuff, dude. I mean, that shit, that shit just looks boring. All right, here we go. Password, as you can see, I've set everything to Tom. I don't usually put my real name into this shit, as you can imagine. Now to understand, people might be asking by now, are we getting spied on? Again, You'd have to look at the network stack for some of this stuff, but I would like to think that not a lot of tools here are really built in spying on you. As much as uh, China's probably, like they're probably look. <laughs> okay, that was, oh, that was unexpected. All right, so I just recently installed like the graphic pack into this so it like runs appropriately and that was a, Whew, that was a wild introduction. But yeah, people who ask about spying, you'd have to look at the network stack. But then again, I like to think that most of the spying in this case usually happens all the way into like the uh, the era of like ISP and like, you know, network level tracking, like something on the server side. But here, if you open up a terminal real quick, you can find out that this is in fact built in 2021. All right, so they've got version 5.10. 0 1029 OEM. So yeah, this is the most up-to-date version of Kylan. Okay, like it is what it is. Now, if we open up their app store, this is like their like writing document tool. So WPS 2019, all of this comes like free by the way too. Like that's actually kind of cool. Like they just give this tool to you free. Again, 
it's probably another open source thing that they just ripped and copied and called it a day. In fact, if you go to the help over here, maybe it'll tell us. No, it's Beijing Kingsoft Office Software. Let's open up the package tool here. Let's get the software store, boys. All right, look at all their cool software, like Linux QQ. Probably something Tencent owned. Browser 360. Oh, hell yeah, dude. 360 browser. Mm -mm. Let's get that down, baby. You can <coughs> also tell that some of the English pack in this is a little mistranslated, but it is what it is. My apps. What do we got? Updates? Ah, we can update Euchre Assistant, Thunderbird, UKUI system. So this is their own, like, user interface, okay? It kind of... Kind of looks like GNOME to me, but hey, it is what it is. Let's go to the function key, okay? So the functions they've got. They got some games. They've got Mahjong, which uh, as much as I played Yakuza, I've never figured out Mahjong in my life. So today is not the day to learn. But then you've got Minesweeper, which uh, if that will ever fire up, looks relatively all right. I mean, I'll, get, I'll give the Chinese operating system one thing. Their version of, like, Minesweeper is a lot more cleaner than, like, the XP or any version of Minesweeper. I don't even think they make Minesweeper anymore, do they? So, yeah, they just got standard amounts of tools. Now, if you've noticed, I've also installed Discord because uh, you can't just use this as a standard operating system. You can just download Discord and Steam and call it a day. They've also got their own message tool, which, gets, which has, like, buddy... It's like a Canadian messaging tool, dude. Buddy. Okay, okay, buddy. Your IP address. Oh, man, y'all are going to hack me with this internal IP address. Oh, boy. 10.2. Write that down, kids. Option. Resident in backend. <laughs> it just stays on top. I, lo I love the Chinese that they're using here. It's always the greatest. Now, they've also got something called KMRE. Which, uh, if this seems kind of weird to you, you can actually run Android apps built in on this tool. So this is something that's kind of like a staple of Chinese operating systems. They will have built in Android support, which, again, I believe a lot of Chinese like user bases use mobile devices. So to have those mobile applications run on side on, on Android or sorry, their Linux distribution is always good. You can go to the mobile apps right over here. And right now this isn't supported in this OS. That might be due to the fact that it's running in a VM, but you can enter Android applications and use them right on your desktop as you normally would. This may also not be running because I'm not using an ARM-based version, but I don't know. And honestly, not a whole lot of this is different. This is totally a usable operating system if you feel comfortable running something that has the backing from the Chinese like military government. But then again, it's open source stuff. So I, I would assume that if there's anything really, really risque in this, it would have probably been found already. Now, that being said, what if you wanted Mac, all right? Chinese software, when I talked about earlier regarding IP theft and whatnot, is rather interesting. So in this case, we're going to look at something called Un Unity Operating System. So this is something that's based off Deepin, another software, another OS that originates from China. Now, for those of you who are Mac users out there, you might be wondering, what if I wanted a Mac-like interface, but a Chinese-built operating system? Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have Deepin right here, which is in fact just that. Now, I've used this for a few deep web browsing episodes as a desktop design, but uh, I'm actually, for the first time ever, using it as a core operating system. So let's let's boot it up. So here it is. Here it is. It's booting up. And ladies and gentlemen, this is China's Deepin operating system, dude. Now, if you look into their uh, if you look into their like user interface. Uh, it's very much, it's very much some close resemblance to macOS. In fact, they've got the whole notification center right there. They're not even trying to hide it. Now, they've got new system edition available. And a lot of these operating systems aren't actually uh, rolling release, which means that they just update the components as they get released. These come in like waves, right? This is like an actual company or a group behind it. Now, if you open up a terminal real quick, you can actually just quickly understand that this one is running on Linux version 5.10. In fact, it was built in 2021. So these are, again, relatively updated versions of Linux. If for some reason you wanted to use this as a core operating system experience, you absolutely can. They definitely detect eight threads and they detect eight gigs of memory. They're modern, actual operating systems. Now, in this case, they've got their own like web browsers, like Deepin browser, I guess you could say. And here they've got like their various search engines. So this is like where you get the real Chinese experience. So you've got Baidu, you've got Sugol, and you've got 360. Okay, so let's let's do Baidu. <laughs> All right. Now I want to try something interesting over here. Do you think we're gonna get anything related to Tiananmen Square? 
Tiananmen Square. And uh, they actually do mention the Tiananmen Square massacre up there, which is interesting. Uh, that definitely massacre crushes China's democracy movement. So it's not like they're even censoring this. This might have slipped through the cracks. Nothing about... Oh, you've got the one tank man right here. You've got an image of tank man. That... That isn't getting censored, okay. Few hundred years ago, Europeans invaded America and massacred thousands of Native Americans. Haven't you heard that too? How about slavery in the early 19th century? Do you think that American, oh my God, those are beautiful dumplings. Have you ever heard, have you ever think Americans atone for being founded on the backs of slaves and greys? I tell you if I ever have a chance to set foot on Tiananmen Square, but don't worry, dude, there ain't got any APCs and tanks there no more to run you over. You can rest in peace. To which this guy, this is back in 2008, dude. This is some, like, real shit. No tanks there to run him over, but I will. <laughs> we got some, we got some warfare going on between the superpowers. I always love witnessing this from the side, dude. A little bit of drama always gets me excited. Yeah, they're really trying to push QQ. Like, Tencent's really trying to get this pushed onto them. That's, that's for sure. But yeah, you can see that they've got Android apps just sort of, like, built in and ready to be played around with. I guess if you can install this, you can see just... Like, I, I guess it works without signing into the system, but yeah, you can install a bunch of these applications and update right from there on in. So all in all, one thing to understand is when you use any of these Linux-based operating systems that are geared towards being friendly to the user, things end up coming across pretty friendly. I mean, it's a very usable experience. Now, one of the final places I wanted to take you down was Red Flag Linux Desktop 11, which is sort of the more updated version. This is also getting endorsed. There's a lot of versions of Chinese Linux that are floating around. And I think every big tech company over there is trying to, like, push their own. Now, in a lot of big, like, hardware releases in China, this is shipping with actual products. So in this case, you have one that's based off of Debian 10.6. So version 4.19, right over here, you can see that they've got Debian. They've got like, they're basing it off of like pretty common versions of Linux. Whoo, all right, ladies and gentlemen, I've literally been spending the last six hours babysitting. So as you can see right here, I am like editing the video together. But uh, here I've got good old fashioned uh, red, red flag Linux, all right? So I've got the most recent version. And of course, the moment you boot into it, it's got 1927 to 2021. Warmly celebrate the 94th anniversary of the founding of the Chinese People's Liberation Army. All right, god damn. But ladies and gentlemen, this one is, they've got a few more wallpapers. Hold on right here. We've got another beautiful one. They got like full, they got, they got full rifles in the back, dude. God damn. It's a, re it's a real patriotic Linux distribution. Here's another one. Now, what kind of weirds me out on this situation is this Linux is even less inspired. So as you can see, this is basically KDE and it's using all the toolkits of the KDE desktop. So this desktop manager is something I use underneath Linux anyways. It's called Dolphin Manager, okay? Except it's just the Chinese variant of it. So here you've got, you know, the actual like drive. And for some reason, what's kind of hilarious is they haven't like split the home and the root directory. They're just all keeping it the same, which is not something I usually do. But, uh, you know, apparently it's how it works in China. All right. Everything is shared, I guess. Now, if we open up the system here real quick, uh, the actual installation, the actual like package manager is apt. So if you're a uh, Debian or like Ubuntu friendly, this is what you have. And it is running 5.10. So the most recent kernel, I guess it was literally built. Uh, this year, like last month even. The actual build I downloaded was like seven hours ago. So <laughs> it was an hour ago when I started, it was an hour old when I started the download and now it's like seven hours old. Shit, shit's insane. But uh, this is in fact, you know, good old fashioned uh, Linux. Now I wanna see if we can do just, uh, let, let's see if we can update from the actual servers back home. So it is communicating to Microsoft packages. Then it's communicating to a couple Chinese servers and uh, it's got 800 packages that actually can be updated. So we can actually just do sudo apt uh, upgrade and you can get this upgraded. Oh wait, there's actually oh, supposedly, uh, yeah, just get rid of all the similarities. But ladies and gentlemen, this is in fact, <laughs> you can update this and, oh yeah, the updates are going to run fast. Okay, so the actual download from your crappy server, that takes a year. But this, ah, oh, 13 megabytes a second. God damn. I knew they had good servers. I knew they had good servers. They have to just fuck me somehow. Pseudo apt install NeoFetch. I just want to get NeoFetch real quick. Just so, just, so I can, just so I can see if they got their own like cute little logo on here. I mean, you can make your own, but... Uh, oh, they just got the lit. They just got tucks. Oh man. Oh baby. 
Is that like their... Oh, wait, guys, wait. This is something new. They actually have a web browser, by the way, too. So they had, they had actually made their own web browser, which is kind of interesting. I want to fire that one up. Oh, no, it's cloud music. Oh, hey, look at all these. Look at all these six singles, dude. You can download all the Chinese music you want. Let's just, let's just put that down there. No, they got their own web browser. I want to see their own web browser, dude. I'm like a kid at a candy store, okay? Ooh, I think we found it. I think we found it. I think we found Red Flag uh, Red Flag Linux, okay? So here it is. It, it looks like whatever it is, it's based off of Chrome, dude. It looks like it's just... Yeah, it's just Chromium. This is the, this apparently is their thing. It's just a Chromium forked version. I, I honestly imagine this is just Chromium straight from back home. <laughs> like, just rebuilt onto it, man. But here's their website, man. You can download it for yourself. And uh, I believe this actually does come from Asianux, which is sort of like an Asian red hat variant, uh, mostly for server stuff. But yeah, here it is. You can go to the BBS server. Uh, you can go to the slow as shit doc site. Uh, where uh, it took forever to download anything, so wouldn't recommend it. But yeah, red flag browser, boys. It's uh, it's Linux in all its glory. Oh, there it is. There it is. Internet applications. And bam, it works right there. I have to say the performance in this version of Linux is actually better than all the other ones we've seen. So yeah, you know what? If you had to use a Chinese-based distribution, this, this might be it, ladies and gentlemen. God damn. What a beautiful piece of kit. Uh, would I recommend you use it at all? No, no. I recommend you just stick to like ubuntu or manjaro so, something something a little bit more uh, not connected to a government i guess is all i'm gonna say but yeah that is uh, that is the chinese operating system let's get back to the video at hand but ladies and gentlemen i'm gonna leave it right where it is now to understand there is a benefit to a lot of this china is pushing for this on their local home turf and in ways companies over here are doing the same thing valve is going to release the steam deck which will hopefully hopefully push the linux market share a little higher where it is now at the end of the day if linux can support gaming and a lot of those higher end exclusive windows features over onto itself this might push the whole like movement to use linux far more stronger than it ever has been and in ways i'm glad that the chinese are adopting linux and i'm glad a lot of other uh, countries are beginning to adopt linux as their homegrown operating system. Because the more Linux use that there is, the better contributions there are to open source, and the better it becomes when it comes to actually designing applications. Because the larger the user base becomes, regardless of it being North American, Chinese, European, or Russian, or whatever, or African, the more people using it, the better it ultimately ends up becoming. So in this case, I'm glad that China is at least pushing for it in their home turf. And in some cases, I hope if Valve succeeds, maybe, maybe in certain North American systems, we can start to see Linux being pushed. Because at the end of the day, for most normies who are using Linux, 99% of it is feature complete, okay? Your granny will not notice the difference browsing Facebook if she's on Windows 10 or Ubuntu, okay? And that's one of the worlds that I wanna see in the future. If we can get a lot of the tools that I use and you use brought over to Linux featureless, well, featurefully and effortlessly, we're in a better situation. That said though, this is me, Mudahar, and if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it, I am out.